I went to Spain for spring break last March. My friend Christina was there for a semester studying abroad. I met Christina when I was in first grade, and she was my best friend until eighth grade when I moved to Philadelphia. We kept in touch throughout high school and spent a lot of time on instant messenger for the first half of college. When she told me I could come to Spain and that she'd take me anywhere I wanted to go, I bet she didn't think I'd do it. I had never flown before. I had never left the East Coast before. But I bought my tickets, saved my money, and emailed her a list of cities and museums I wanted to see. She told me she'd come up with an itinerary and make reservations for rooms and train tickets and whatever else we needed. I arrived in Madrid and she was two hours late meeting me at the airport. That first night we stayed in her dorm in Cordoba and she took me to an Arab bathhouse. There were hot tubs, icy cold tubs, a big warm pool, and five people that gave full body massages. Afterwards we went to a tea house and I drank cinnamon tea that I still crave. After that, I found out Christina hadn't actually made an itinerary or any reservations for anything. That bothered me. I liked to have a plan, a schedule to follow. She took me to the mosque at Cordoba. We had learned about an art history, and I was so excited to be able to say I had been there. But for some reason, I wasn't impressed. I wasn't awestruck by its size and age like I thought I would be. We spent a few days in Barcelona where I went to more cathedrals that didn't blow me away. We saw a lot of Gaudí's work that I tried to appreciate but didn't like. The most important thing on this trip was that I see the Salvador Dali Museum in Figueres. I had made that very clear, but due to lack of planning, we almost didn't get to go. At that point, so many little things had gone wrong. I wasn't seeing the things I had come to see, and I began to realize that Christine and I had both changed a lot since we were 14. I wasn't so sure I liked her anymore, and I wasn't sure this trip was worth it. Christina could tell I was pissed, and luckily she figured out a way that we could go to the museum. It was the only experience other than the Arab bathhouse that I thoroughly enjoyed. I spent my last day there in Madrid at El Prado, trying to get excited about all of the famous paintings I was getting to see in real life. But I was so miserable and disgusted that I just kept thinking, so what? It looks just like the slide I saw in class or the picture in my textbook. At the airport, Christine and I hugged goodbye and I thanked her for a wonderful time. She told me to call her when I got home. Yeah, right, I thought. I didn't want to talk to her. At security, the guy wouldn't hand check my film and Super 8 film. He made me send it through the x-rays. In English, I yelled at him, telling him he was ruining the only good thing that might turn out for my whole trip. I couldn't wait to be home. I couldn't wait to see my city from the window of the plane. I still haven't called Christina. A few months later, I met Jesse. We started seeing each other at the beginning of July, but I knew he was leaving at the end of July to live with his grandparents in Nebraska for a few months. Maybe I'll come visit you out there, I told him. That'd be really nice, he said. But like Christina, I don't think he believed I'd come. I don't think I believed I'd go. I wasn't the type of person who would fly halfway across the country to be with a boy. I was the type of person who had spent the last two years training myself not to fall in love, not to have any attachment to anyone. I went, though, and I went to be with him, even though I avoided admitting that to myself and to anyone else. I tried to think of it as a very casual trip, but we both knew that this was a chance for him to change my mind about relationships and love. He still likes to tell me the story of the day I called him and told him I had bought my plane tickets. I was like, wow, she's serious. I had low expectations of how fun or interesting a trip to Auburn, Nebraska could be. You'd be surprised, though. The theater there only showed one movie a week, but it cost $4. We saw Spy Kids 3D and American Wedding just for the hell of it. We loaded up his grandpa's RV with a stereo, TV, VCR, Nintendo, microwave, cooler full of beer, bags of snacks and candy, and went camping near the Missouri River. He took me to the playground he played on as a kid with the demilitarized World War II tank in it. He showed me where his house used to be and the cemetery where his brother is buried. He made his grandpa drive us around in his beautiful 1949 Lincoln Cosmopolitan. We sat on the second floor porch in a big hammock for hours. He took me to the top of a silo to watch the soy wave in the wind. I missed driving around in the 1962 Ford pickup truck, past miles of corn and through towns like Brock and Peru, with populations of less than 300 people. I miss the Shell gas station with the wide assortment of liquor and candy. I miss the cheeseburgers from Holly's. I miss waking up in the big antique bed I slept in for most of August. I can't believe I really miss Auburn, Nebraska. Before I left, I asked Jesse to ship my Super 8 film off for processing so I didn't have to risk sending it through x-ray machines on my way back, not that it seemed to have mattered with my Spain footage. The other day, I found a receipt on my floor from the Auburn post office. 
Jesse explained, This is from when I sent your film. I had it insured for $50, just in case something happened. At least you'd walk away with 50 bucks. I told him, 50 bucks wouldn't come close to covering what that film is worth to me.